Good morning YouTube. This is Johnny. I noticed looking at my videos it's been three days. Yeah, the older I get life just keeps, just keeps zooming by. Uh, the death flow keeps flowing. Here in West Michigan it is 9.03 in the morning. It is April the 21st. It is Resurrection Sunday. My life, my life, my wife left for church early because she is in the nursery during Sunday school. And yeah, I got up this morning around 6.34, made coffee and uh, wrote in my diary. I'm on page 353 for the year 2019 here on April the 21st, 2019. So yeah, yeah, that's what I do. I read, I write, I read, I write, I read, I write. That is my uh, my day-to-day -day existence as I wander the wasteland. Uh, I have been reading this morning, Reformed Systematic Theology, Volume 1, Revelation and God. I was reading this morning the chapter on the doctrine of revelation. I was reading Errors Regarding Special Revelation, Part 2. Liberalism, liberalism, liberal, was it? Liberalism, being liberalism, offspring. Errors regarding special revelation part two. So I was reading that and I was falling asleep. <laughs> so I uh, woke myself up. I f threw some corn out to the birds, put some fresh suet for the woodpeckers. Uh, I did the dishes and I thought, hey, I'll make a video. The house is quiet. I'm here alone inside the hermit hut writing in my diary, reading some dry Dutch Reformed theology and I thought, yeah, I make a video. And for some reason, th this chapter keeps coming to my mind in the in the Bible. It's in 2 Thessalonians. This is Resurrection Sunday and my guess is it deals with the Resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ from the grave. He says here in Reve uh, not Revelations, <laughs> Second Thessalonians, uh, chapter two. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to Him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter as if from us, though the day of, the, of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, perdition, perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was, was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is re restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do it so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, in whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, and they should, del should believe the lie, that they may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, be beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you 
for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth, to which he called you by <clears throat> our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast, hold the traditions which you were taught. See, that's what special revelation is. I, I think that's why the private text came to me, because I was reading this morning about special revelation. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by the word of our epistle. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our, Lord, and our God and Father, who has loved us and given us an everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. So I thought this morning, first of all, like I said, I've been reading Reformed Systematic Theology in the morning. Not every morning. I, I read yesterday that book I have on my study desk on the biblical theology of circumcision. So I read that. And then in last couple of days, I've been reading still notebooks, 1936 to 1947 by Victor Serge. I... I ordered another uh, book by him that was published by the New York Review Books Classics. Uh, it's coming in the mail today, Memoirs of a Revolutionary. I'm getting that in the mail. I really, uh, I've read 128 pages of this and it's kind of slow going because I have to look up things on the internet about different uh, events and people and uh, but I have been enjoying this and uh, I like the sections in the notebooks it's really uh, great prose and the way he describes things and and how he looks at what's going on in Europe during the, the, the first year of the war 1940 and 1941-42 even though he's been exiled in Mexico, he's still getting reports about what's going on in Russia, and he was a Russian who was uh, involved in the, Bezhe the Bolshevik Revolution. He was an anarchist. Uh, <clears throat> he wrote a he wrote a biography on Leo Trotsky, and anyway, it's very interesting. And I plan to read his memoirs of a revolutionary. Yesterday, I uh, I tried to hit all the different thrift stores throughout the week, and I went to uh, a th thrift store yesterday called Ditto's, which they sell used things to raise money for Christian uh, schools. And I picked up these these books, and I thought I'd just show them with other books by the same people because I col I tend to buy things that I collect or writers or subjects and I just thought I'd show them to you guys because I want to get them down the lower level they're piling up in the living room I picked up yesterday at Ditto's thrift store you don't have to say you love me a memoir by Sherman Ax Al Axi Al Axi uh, so I was reading this yesterday I read you know, about 13 pages of this memoir. He's a, a Native American writer, if you can say that. And um, But he wrote, it says here, a National Book Award winning author of the Absolute True Diary of a Part-Time Indian. And I have that book here. Uh, it's really supposed to be a YA book. <laughs> uh, it says here in the back, Junior is a budding cartoonist growing up on the Spokane Indian Reservation, born with a variety of medical problems. He is picked on by everyone but his best friend. Determined to receive a good education, Junior leaves the res to attend an all-white school in the neighboring farm town, where the only other Indian is the school mascot. Despite being condemned as a traitor to his people, and enduring great tragedies, Junior attacks life with wit and humor and discovers a strength inside of himself that he never knew existed. 
Inspired by his own experiences growing up, award-winning author Sherman L. Axie chronicles his contemporary adolescence and one unlucky boy, of one unlucky boy trying to rise above the life everyone expects him to live. So yeah, I like reading his writings. I, I collect them and I've read his short stories and other writings. He writes poetry, but he write, has a really interesting perspective on life in America and growing up. And I find his writings uh, very interesting, especially when you compare this memoir with this the two different perspectives on the world and how they see the world and how they understand the world is very interesting. Uh, I also volunteered at the Book Nook uh, Friday and I picked up this book, Bless It, The History of American Prosperity Gospel by Kate Bauer. For those who are Christians, you want to know the history of the prosperity gospel health, wealth, and prosperity. Well, health, I can't, I can't remember the, how it goes. Health and wealth, something like that. It's a good book. Uh, I was reading parts of it last night before I went to bed. As you all know, I'm a student of American Christianity. Then I picked up at the Ditto's thrift store yesterday this book Original Meaning, Politics and Ideas in the Making of the Constitution by Jack N. Rankvove. This is a winner of the Pulitzer Prize. He mentions in this book uh, Gordon Wood, who is a very famous American historian. And he wrote this book, uh, Gordon S. Wood, uh, radicalism of the American Revolution. The mo it says that here by the New York Book Review. The most important study of the American Revolution to appear in over 20 years, a landmark book. I really recommend Gordon S. Wood. I collect his writings. He wrote a, a biography of Benjamin Franklin. He's written, oh, uh, The Creation of the American Republic, 1776 to 1787. Uh, he's really worth uh, reading. And then I picked up at uh, Ditto's Parallel Lives, Five Victorian Marriages by Phyllis Rose. And this is the marriages of five Victorians. And as you look at it, Jane Welsh and Thomas Carlyle. Uh, Ephie Gray and John Ruskin, Harriet Taylor and John Stuart Mill, Catherine Hogarth and Charles Dickens, George Eliot and George Henry Lewes, Jane, Jane Welsh and Thomas Carlyle. That's must have mentioned twice. I wonder why. Anyway, that's interesting. I didn't notice that. It's Maybe it's... Uh, Wonder why they have two chapters on J Jane Welsh and Thomas Carlyle. Interesting. Anyway, she also wrote this, Phyllis Rose. This book to my library, our library, The Year of Reading Prouse, A Memoir of Real Time by Phyllis Rose. See, it says below there, author of Parallel Lives. This came out in the 90s. She's now 70 years old. So I have two books by her. And then I picked up this poetry by Derek Welcott. This is winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature, Omeris. It's kind of like poetry. Uh, so I don't know much about this. And then I picked up uh, Uh, this is at another thrift store. I think this is Action House. I picked this up a couple of days ago. Walk, Waking Giant, America in the Age of Jackson by David S. Reynolds. I have this book by David S. Reynolds. Uh, Walt Whitman's America, a culture biography. 
I recommend his writings if you're into American history. Uh, I was reading this yesterday on the chapter about uh, what was going on in American Christianity. There's a really interesting chapter, God's Many Kingdoms. He goes, and it's just a really interesting chapter on the rise of democratic evangelical Christianity. As you all know, Walt Whitman wrote The Leaves of Grass. And uh, so I got that. And then I picked up also a Ditto's this novel by T.R. Person, Call and Response. He also, I have this in our library, A Short History of a Small Place by T.R. Person. You know, as y'all know, I, I had like books together in this, by the same author. And then I picked up at Action House, Thrift Store, Vietnam, History, Documents, and Opinions on Major World, on a Major World Crisis. If you're into American history, especially as you know, I look at the, the Vietnam conflict, uh, time of, uh, of course, you have Dwight Eisenhower, and then you have John F. Kennedy, and then you have Nixon and the Vietnam conflict. So these are just documents and about that conflict. And then I picked up this novel, The Sympathizer, winner of the Pulitzer Prize by Vat Thang Nguyen. I'm probably mispronouncing that. It was a, a, a hundred notable books. The New York Book Review, 2015. And then I picked up this biography in King James, the, the, the fifth of Scotland, the first of England, James King James the first of England, by uh, Antonio Antonio Fraser. As you all know, she's a very famous biographer. She wrote a biography in Mary Queen of Scots, Cromwell the Protector, and she's written other books. I've shown those. I collect her writings. This is really kind of old and it's only a dollar. And since I collect everybody, uh, if I find a, a biographer, I start collecting all the ones, all the, all the biographies that they, they have written. As you all know, King James was the King James Bible. <laughs> He's the one that commissioned it to be uh, the new translation that is very famous today. Anyway, those are the books I got. I got The Sympathizer by Vat Thing Neg Yin. I can't pronounce that. I got the book Vietnam. King James Biography. The Waking Giant America in the Age of Jackson by David Reynolds. Uh, a Call and Response, a novel by T.R. Harrison. Pearson, some poetry by Derek Wilcott, Omaras, Parallel Lives, by Five Victorian Marriages by Phyllis Rose, Original Meaning, Politics and Ideas in the Making of the Constitution by Jack in Rake Cave, Rock Cav, and Bless It, uh, The History of American Prosperity Gospel by Kate Bauer. And You Don't Have to Say You Love Me, a memoir by Sherman Axie, Axial. So those are the things I picked up at thrift stores the other day, what I've been reading. I've been really reading this in the afternoons, Notebooks, 1936 and 1947 by Victor Serge. Been reading in the mornings, Reform, Systematic Theology, Revelation and God, Volume 1. Writing in my diary. I spent a lot of time watching videos in Booktube. I spent time writing in my diary. I spent time watching the birds. I spent time talking to my wife. I spend time praying. I spend time sitting in silence. I spend time 
just uh, waiting it out. But yeah, check out Radicalism of the American Revolution by Gordon S. Wood and check out his book, uh, as I mentioned, that book he wrote about um, the creation of the American Republic, 1776 to 1787. As you all know, when I when I when I'm reading, I have this timeline in my mind, the creation of the world in Genesis into 2019, and in that time span, and then I have um, the history of of America from about 1798 up until 2017. And in those time spans, I place writers and literature and historical events and Christianity and philosophy and theology and all these things. I just, and so, but when it comes to America, I ha I'm always reading American Christianity. I'm always reading about American history. Uh, novels, biographies, letters, memoirs. Uh, so, and I'm always, so I'm always like traveling up and down the road of American history and the development of uh, war, it, Christian movements within American history, the evangelical movement, Pentecostalism, Methodism, Quakerism, New Age, uh, Transcendentalism, uh, Utopian movements, uh, philosophical movements like Pragmatism, William James, or John Dewey, or people like that. And so I'm always just going around and around the same kind of, uh, I read the same kind of books in the same areas all the time. I've been doing that for almost all my reading life. And plus I've gone to college and seminary and Bible college and taken classes and all kinds of things. History of Mexico and the English Reformation and sociology and mis you know, study of missions and liberation theology, uh, radical Anabaptist movements during the Protestant Reformation, or studying about the Beats you know, or the abstract painters in New York, or reading about the Gilded Age or the, um, the Civil War, or reading a biography in Ralph Waldo Emerson. It just goes on and on and on. And then when I'm doing all that, I write in my diary and I just wait for the second coming of Christ on the Resurrection Sunday. So, hoping you had a good week. This is a new week. As I said, I got a book coming in the mail today by Victor Serge. And yeah, I don't know what this week will hold for me, but I'm just, uh, I just keep trucking. <laughs> So thank you for the comments. Thank you for the new subscribers. I hope you're all doing well. And hope you're having a good Resurrection Sunday. It is blessed to know that we are under the reign of Christ, the King of glory, that we are united in Christ, and that we can experience the resurrection of power of Christ to overcome sin, that Christ is with us in the midst of our struggles, to give us grace and strength, that He is always near, and that He loves His people, and that He wants to bring us into the eternal kingdom of glory. So we need to keep that perspective as we are surrounded by insanity. So until next time, bye.